the Indiana Robotics Invitational brings together some of the best of the best all around the FRC world to compete in an all-star-like format. 69 teams came in from four different countries representing just some of the true power of what iRI has to bring. We're going to give you a full recap of what went down at this event, talk about a little bit about qualifications, some of the details of alliance selection, playoffs, and some other things as well. And if you're interested in more, make sure you check out FRC Roundup. We have drive coach from 2056, Tyler Holtzman, and also Nick Mathis from 33 at the event, talking more about their experiences at iRI. But for this one, let's talk about what happened and break down some of the results here on FRC Recap. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com slash sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. The Indiana Robotics Invitational this past weekend brought together 69 of some of the best teams in FRC. With an average ELO of 1773 and an average EPA of 55.5 according to Setbotics, IRI was sure to be an amazingly competitive event. After schedule release predictions showed that 2056 OP Robotics would be leading the charge and on course to win their 10th IRI. However, other teams predicting the top 8 were 930, 2910, 3538, 111, 180, 2041, and 4678, which by the way, I was so happy to see 4678 Cybercaps compete after missing them at championships. I had a chance to interview them and their robot on Behind the Bumpers, and you got to check it out once it comes out. No teams would go undefeated at IRI, and many eyes were on 2056. And they started out well. But unfortunately, their fourth qual match, 43, lost by one point due to a penalty, and their fifth match, Q52, had a major stumble, knocking them out of Alliance captain contention. Here you can see at 54 seconds, 2056 colliding with 2338 geared forward, knocking them off balance and eventually over as they made their way back to the grid, resulting in a red card for 2056. With the door open for another team to take the number one spot in qualifications, matches were absolutely awesome. The average winning score at qualifications at IRI was 182.16 and a full 80 points higher than what the charge of season average was. And from what I could tell, the highest winning average score over the Galileo division by about 18 points. 2910 Jack in the Bot would seed first with a 3.77 ranking score, followed by 2539, 1706, 2041, 111, 4143, 245, and 695. As I sit near the field waiting for a line selection, I turn around to see 2910 and 2056 sitting front row, making it clear who 2910 first pick was going to be. Well, not a surprise by any means. What did surprise me is that as far as I could look back, 2056, who was seated 35th, was the lowest rank in IRI history to be selected by number one seed as their first pick. The number one seed would go on to make a great pick in 1923 Midnight Inventors and the Cube Shooting Robot and 7457 Super Duper Robotics to round it up. A couple other alliances that we're going to talk about here uh, and a couple other interesting things was the lack of in-picking within the top eight. 2539 Krypton Cougars attempted to select 111 Wildstang, who was the number five seed, and they declined. And 1706 Ratchet Rockers would be the only alliance captain to take another alliance uh, captain or seating position, which is 2041 Roboteers, who were number four. At IRI, there are many high-tier teams that weren't picked. One that I thought that had a great shot going to IRI was, well, 4499, the Highlanders. Here in Q96, we see them demonstrate a three-piece auto, good cycle times, and a wide load cube intake. But it's IRI, so many great teams, there's some that are going to get left behind. The number one alliance had healthy win margins and scores in just three matches and a cruise in the finals. But let's take a look at some other, other alliances and what their performance was in the playoffs. To me, the other alliance that popped out and I would have expected to make the finals was the number four Lions. They were really well, really well rounded with 111, uh, fellow Midwest regional winner 930, Buckeye winner 4028, and Waterloo winner and provincial division finalist Team Dave. The number four Lions might have went out in three matches, but they had scored over 200 points in every single match. And I think they just had maybe a little bit of bad luck competing against the Lions who just had their pinnacle matches while they were competing. 
A couple other alliances that really surprised me here. Alliance number six comprised of Captain 245, along with 33, 27, 67, and 6045, when all three of their matches with their alliance captain sitting out. A noble move that we've seen before at IRI, but I know how tough of a decision that must have been for 245 to make. And I think the real surprising alliance was Alliance 5, comprised of 41, 43, 118, 6090, and 3357. Ironically, 3357 was the highest ranked team out of the three robots chosen by this alliance. 118 and 6090 had some issues in quals, and looking at their first playoff match in match number two, they looked sloppy and handily lost uh, this match with the second lowest score of the playoffs. Match five, they won with the lowest winning score. But come match 10, they turned it on and got it together with 203 points. And in the lower bracket final, match number 13, set a new high score of 219 unpenalized points. An amazing performance, and going to the finals, it would become a legendary matchup. Finals one was spectacular. Red would score one extra game piece in auto, giving them a slight edge, but blue would continually leap and keep the pace up. I really love to watch 1923 on the field and the strategy of the number one alliance. 1923 was a robot that's gone through so much from their first iteration of the season to just zip around the field, scoring cubes so quickly. It was an awesome choreographed dance. The number one alliance would win by just one supercharged node with a score of 214 to 210. As clean as Finals 1 was, Finals 2 would be a different tale for both alliances. Both alliances were able to score seven game pieces in auto, but at about the 128 second mark, you see the number five alliance captain 4143 hit the shelf a bit weird, and something happened where they broke their arm and they were forced to play defense. Now, also take a look here at 81 seconds left. 2056 almost had a relapse of their qualification red card as they contacted 4143 that almost resulted in them tipping over. It would have been interesting to see how they would have been called if that happened. And instead, the number one alliance was able to keep other cycles with 2910 and 1923, just going at it and still consistent without defense. They were able to overpower the number five alliance. It would win IRI 210 to 196. Congratulations to the number one alliance with both Alliance Captain 2910, 2056, 1923, and 7457, who were all out at the championships by round three. 7457 also got a chance to play in IRI playoffs too in match number seven, which I think is something all teams should get to experience. And of course, the 10th win for 2056, who has absolutely dominated IRI. Big shout out to the IRI planning committee for another great event. I do admit I miss some of the team dinners, the talent shows, and other aspects of the IRI pass, but IRI is still an amazing event of some of the best teams in the world competing, and bringing them all together is incredible. Also, a big shout out to ISC, who shoutcasted the event and brought in several members of the community to help com commentate and really add a cool flair to what the event was. We won't be doing recaps on all the off seasons, but we do have a couple more still to come until Crescendo starts at kickoff, and we recorded plenty of behind the bumpers videos too at IRI, and also a couple of the other off season events from some other correspondents. We still have great content to come this off season, so keep an eye out on Fun's YouTube channel, Discord, and social media channels for what's to come. Good luck to all teams competing this off season, and I hope to see you around. We'll see you next time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. Head on over to solidworks.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.